Hey, this is Jeffrey Osborne, and my new single is called Worth It All, and you're watching my Steve Harvey Ask Anything chat. Big shout out to Steve and the crew over there at the morning show, and also iHeartRadio for having me on this morning to answer some of your questions. So hey, let's get started. <laughs> We're going to start with uh, Lisa from Memphis, and she wants to know, do fans ever mix me up with any other R&B singers? <laughs> and yes, it does happen, Lisa. Uh, people come up to me all the time, and every now and then someone will come up and say, you know what? I love everything you've ever done, all the way back from LTD. I know every song you've ever sung, and my favorite song of yours is called uh, Just Once, and I try not to react. I kind of smile. And I say to them, you know what? That's one of my favorite songs, too. I love that song. And then we just hug. We take a picture. We hug and smile. And then I call James and say, James, it happened again. And James has the same thing that happens to him all the time. And people come up to him, ask him about all his songs, and say their favorite song of his is On the Wings of Love. So we always laugh about it. You know, the worst thing you can do is bust somebody's bubble. You don't want to embarrass anyone. So we smile. We accept it. It's a great song. I'm happy that they love that song. And the other one is, oh, they come up and say, hey, I, I love that song of yours, you know, Caribbean Queen. And I laugh it off again because, hey, at least they're great songs that they're mixing me up with. So, yeah, great question, Lisa. Uh, great question. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, Renee from Douglasville. Now, I'm not sure where Douglasville is because there's probably a few Douglasvilles out there. But her question is, from your perspective as an artist, how has the music business changed for me um, since the 80s? And it's changed a lot, I got to tell you. I don't even know. I, I, I could go 10 minutes on this subject. But let's pick uh, an aspect. Okay, let's say recording. Uh, from the recording aspect, it's changed so much. I mean, you know, we used to record on these big machines. They were called 24-track uh, tape machines. And we had these big sound engineering boards in the studio, and they were analog boards. And so that all went out. In the late 80s, it all kind of went away, and now everything is digital. There's small boards. Everything is digital. Uh, the sound changed quite a bit. I had to get used to it because analog was nice and warm. Digital has a little crunch on it. You know, it just doesn't sound as warm, but it has come a long way since then. Um, I mean... As an artist, we watched everything change from the 80s. From albums, there used to be record albums. They used to, 45s, there were 45s, these little round records that, you know, they had a, a turntable, and then you would have a spindle that went on the turntable, and you drop the 45 down, boom. It was amazing. They had cassettes, and whoa, 80s, what about 8 tracks? Y'all don't know nothing about 8 tracks. So, yeah, things have changed so much, uh, and even genres of music have just blown up because it went from R&B to hip hop and rap that came in. And then country music is huge now, way bigger than it was back in the 80s. And gospel music is huge. I think the only music genre that suffered a little bit was R&B. And we're trying to bring that back. We're hoping we can bring that back. But yeah, so many things has changed uh, for me from the 80s. I could go on and on. But another good question, Renee. All right, let's move on. How about Elsa from D.C.? She wants to know, how many show dates do you usually do a year? Well, Elsa, I've kind of cut back. You know, I've gotten a little older. I'm now called a veteran artist. There was a time with LTD we used to tour six months out of the year. On the road, six straight months. That don't happen no more. Since 9-11, it's gotten tougher and tougher to travel. Uh, it's just a nightmare. You know, all the security things you have to go through. So I've kind of cut it back a lot. I might do now maybe... Three shows max a week. Uh, I go out on the weekends. I come home and enjoy my family during the week. So you figure three a week, you know, that's like 12 a month. So let's round it out. I probably do about 80 shows to 100 shows a year now. So I've cut it back. But I'm still out there enjoying you fans, and I love bringing the live music to y'all. Good question. Okay, here we go. We're going to LaDonna from Buffalo. Oh, this is really a good one. She wants to know how big it was at the time to have my show, the Woo Woo song, on the Cosby show. Wow. Do you know how long ago that was? Oh, my God. It had to be 86, 87. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, you know, it was amazing. I mean, Bill Cosby was an 
icon. He still is an icon. It's kind of sad to see what's happening with him now. But back then, his show was huge. Everybody watched the Cosbys. The Huxtables, are you kidding? The first black middle class family on television. Oh my God, it was huge for me. And I had such a great time. You know, I got to sing Woo Woo to Claire Huxtable, Felicia Rashad, his wife. Uh, and then they had this lady on there on the cast. Her name was uh, Madeline Kahn. And I went up to her and she had this incredibly high voice. <laughs> and she sang so beautiful it was crazy then I got a chance to go to the audience and have them sing during the break uh, it was really really huge for me my record flew off the shelves after I did the Cosby show so that's another great question and I'll tell you what I, I couldn't I couldn't thank Bill Cosby back then enough it was great for me all right let's let's go to the next question all right Dwayne from New Orleans he's asking can I name the four original kings of comedy. Come on, man. Everybody can name them. I mean, come on. Bernie Mac, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and hey, D.L. Hughley. They were the kings of comedy. And uh, 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 God bless Bernie Mac. Uh, he was incredible. Steve Harvey, Cedric, D.L. Hughley, they're still the kings. They're still doing it. Steve Harvey is doing it big. Cedric is out there doing it big. D.L. Hughley is out. So catch these guys. Go out and catch the kings because they are still the kings and they are incredible at what they do. All right, so we're going to move on. Carrie from Daytona Beach, she wants to know where do I spend most of my time when I'm not working? Well, Carrie, I spend most of my time right here. Uh, I'm actually at home right now. I'm sitting in my studio. I spend a lot of time in the studio here, but I spend most of my time with my family when I'm home. And that's the beautiful thing. I get a chance to spend more time with my family because I don't do as many shows as I used to do. So it's, a, it's kind of a nice thing to be here, to spend time with the family. There are a couple of things I do, though, that you know, I spend time with that are just fun, like hobbies. You know, one of my great pastimes is golf. I have my own celebrity golf tournament. But I get out and I try to play golf, you know, because I can't look bad in front of the other celebrities, so I have to keep my game up. So, you know, when I'm not working, I play a lot of golf. I, you know, I get out there on the links and play a little bit. Also, one thing that you probably would never think that I do is fly fishing. One of my favorite pastimes is fly fishing. I started when my son was like, 10 years old. We took lessons together. We went out. We was throwing a fly. We was catching the fish. And the most incredible thing about this is I love being in nature. I've written most of all of my lyrics while I've been out on the water fishing. It's the most beautiful, serene thing that there is. And, uh, you know, I've written some great songs out there on the water. So those are the things I kind of do, you know, when I'm not working. Okay. I probably used up all the time, but I'm going to go on to another question. Uh, you know what? I don't think I have another question. So you know what? I want to just throw big thanks out there. Thank you all for watching my exclusive Steve Harvey morning show, Ask Anything. My new song is called Worth It All. Big shout out to Steve and the crew. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you all for sending in those questions. All right. I'm out. Mm. Bye.